Hi, welcome and thank you for coming back to listen to this video on three dimensional breathing. Now the purpose of this video and our time together is to discuss and remind you of what three dimensional breathing is, how we're doing it, but very importantly, why we're doing it. So three dimensional breathing really targets the diaphragm and the diaphragm is your largest muscle that you use for respiration, which is breathing. It is a dome that sits underneath your heart and your lungs. And when you inhale, you lower that dome so that you take your oxygen in. And then when you exhale, that dome recoils back up and you expel your carbon dioxide. So we need that diaphragm strong and we need it to move in its full range. Now, it's for that reason that when we inhale, we want to lower that diaphragm down. If I were to have my hand on my chest and one on my abdomen, as I inhale, I absolutely want my abdomen to extend because then it shows me that my diaphragm is lowering. We don't want to be breathing into our chest or our upper, our shoulders or our neck. So that is why we need to breathe down. Now, this is very similar to diaphragmatic breathing. However, three-dimensional breathing reminds us that the diaphragm is a dome, and then when it flattens, it flattens in all directions. That is why we give it that name. So, all that being said, we're really focusing on strengthening that diaphragm. It has two roles. One role is for breathing, which is what we've been really talking about, but it also has a role in posture. And our exercises are challenging your diaphragm to do both of those things at the same time, which really challenge its strength. Now we also, as we mentioned, need that diaphragm to be flexible. We need it to go into its full range of motion. And that's where our stretching comes in, when we're lifting our arm and taking that diaphragm to stretch it out, as well as stretching some other muscles that are used for respiration, including things like intercostals, which are between your ribs. We absolutely need those to be flexible so your rib cage can move and your lungs can expand. So we are really stretching and strengthening that diaphragm at the same time. So when we breathe in, we breathe in through our nose like you're smelling a rose. And like we said, we're letting that abdomen extend out. Now when you're exhaling, we are focusing on pursed lips and a forced exhale like you're blowing out a candle. Why? That's a great question. So we really want to expel all of the carbon dioxide. Of course, we always leave some behind, but if we leave too much carbon dioxide behind, your diaphragm, now instead of recoiling all the way up, it flattens a little bit and you're not getting the full range of motion. And if you're not recoiling and all the way up and that carbon dioxide isn't being expelled, you're not going to have the room for the oxygen to come in. So that's the reason why our exhale is going to usually and hopefully be longer than the inhale so that you can forcefully expel that carbon dioxide. So now that is how we are doing our diaphragmatic breathing as well as why we are doing it. Um, if you have a special disease or a specific pathology such as COPD, I have made a video just for you since there are some specific changes. So please watch that. I think you'll find it insightful. And then as for this video, I hope it provides a good review for you. I highly recommend that you continue to rewatch it throughout our series so that you can have a reminder that motivates you to carry and follow through.